B. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back here to Mountain Lion Park on the north side of campus here at UCCS in Colorado Springs, Colorado. My name's Jake Ross alongside Brian Geenan. And Brian, yesterday we kind of saw two different games. The first game, it was all about the pitching. Cole Phillip, great start on the mound for UCCS. Carl had a very good outing to start the game as well for CCU. 
The second game, not the same story. Lots right. of runs scored, lots of offense. Having that kind of back and forth and two different stories within the games yesterday, talk to me about uh, how these teams are going to come out today. Yeah, absolutely. It's important to start hot. Um, Dave Hedgick's got his squad ready to go. He's got the big left-hander on the mound to start off in Hoffman, and it's going to be a great start today. Hopefully both teams can get the bats going early. The wind's always a factor here in Colorado Springs, so we'll have to see how that impacts this game as well. Yeah, John Hoffman on the mound for UCCS to start this game in the top half of the first inning. Kind of a back-and-forth season for him. Usually it takes him a little bit to get going. It's all about him trying to limit those early runs inside of this game for UCCS. And if he's able to do that, I think that he is going to have a great day overall. To get you the starting lineups, starting first with the batting order for the visiting CCU Kurt Cougar, excuse me. Frankie Shearn will be out in left field batting first. Caden Walton back out at shortstop in the two hole. Jordan Medina, who we saw both catch and DH yesterday, in the three-hole, he'll start behind the plate. Gabe Ramos out in right field. We've seen him out there in all of this series so far. Luke Thompson doing the designated hitting in the five-hole. Bodie Flores at second base. Major Maiden at first. Russell Cruz at third base. We saw him in game one, but not in game two. And Aaron Morgan will be patrolling center field for the Cougars. He is batting ninth. Defensively for the Mountain Lions to start, Hayden Iverson out in left field. Usually that's Kit Wigington. We mentioned yesterday he's dealing with a little bit of some discomfort in one of his hands. He is in the lineup offensively at the designated hitter position. We'll get to that in the bottom half of the inning. But Hayden Iverson out in left field. Aaron Brackle in center field for UCCS with Casey Campbell out and right. Vander Hodges starting at the hot corner with Ronan Hella in the six hole. Bacoli Sayre will be at second base with Caleb Stubbings in his usual spot at first. Tyler Richardson getting the start behind the plate as he did in game one, and he receives ball one from John Hoffman, and we are underway here in game three. This will be Hoffman's eighth appearance on the year. He's started three games already and has a three and one win loss record putting up a 6.92 ERA with 26 innings pitched for the Mountain Lion defense. 2-0 pitch is low as well and quickly 3-0 here on Sharon. We kind of mentioned that he can start slow at times. See ya how it plays out, but he starts with a four-pitch walk as Shearn makes his way to first base. The leadoff runner is on for CCU. Walks have certainly been an issue. They were a big factor in yesterday's second game where the Mountain Lions walked 13 batters compared to the Cougars' zero. Walks certainly tend to come back to bite you in the long run, and they certainly did for UCCS. First strike of the game delivered to Caden Walton now into the batter's box. The check over to Shearn, and he taking a very short lead, just kind of shuffles back to the bag. 0-1 still at the plate on Walton. Another check over. Walton had a rough start to the first game yesterday, but in the second game was able to draw three walks in that, sec in that second appearance with a hit by pitch and a single as well, so reaching in all five plate appearances in game two. Also had a run scored in that first inning when he was able to reach on that single to... Get the offense started for CCU. There is plenty of it, scoring 10 runs in game two. The 1-1 one, one to Walton here is slapped back to the screen, one and two. 10 seems to be the magic number so far this weekend as both of the wins for each side having 10 runs scored for that winning team. Oh. And again, looking over to first, there goes the runner. The throw to second base is going to be there. And out, caught stealing is Shearn. And he erases himself on the base paths. 
That was a beautiful throw by Richardson. Just set his feet, took the time, made a beautiful throw and a great tag at second base to get that leadoff runner. So caught stealing is out number one as Churn tries to gamble and comes up empty and then a strikeout at the plate on the high heater. Gets the swing and miss out of Walton. All of a sudden, two up and two down as Medina comes up with two out. Defensive starts were not the staple of the game yesterday. Both teams scoring early in both games, it felt like. As this one's lifted just off the top of the glove of Ronan Hella into left field for a base hit. And he'll try and get some two-out production started for CCU. It'll bring up Ramos. Tough play out there for Ronan Hella at shortstop. He Got a big frame, but just couldn't reach that one. First pitch, Ramos takes for strike one. This will be a nice matchup for Hoffman facing the lefty. Ramos had two doubles in the second half of the doubleheader. That one's inside, pulling his hands up to get out of the way is Ramos, one and one. Beautiful day today. Sun is out, a couple of clouds, but... More kind of Toy Story clouds than actual clouds. 1-1, one, one, swung on and missed, went fishing, did Ramos, came up empty. It's 1-2. and two. This one softly grounded right back to the mound. Hoffman will take it himself, easily flip over to Caleb Stubbings. A couple of base runners... Threatened, but none score. We are scoreless through the top half of the first. Mount lines up to bat for the first time when we return. Mount lines up to bat for the first time. Hayden Iverson leading things off for the third game in a row. And this one is smashed to start. Going back is Morgan, and it's gone. A leadoff first pitch solo shot for Hayden Iverson. And the Mount Lions have a one to nothing lead. Iverson, great piece of hitting to pick up his fourth home run on the year. That ball was, like you mentioned, absolutely blasted to center field and just kept on going. 
Well, it's Saxton Sorensen on the mound. We didn't have a chance to introduce him. He's already on the hook on the wrong side of things, giving up an early run in this one, delivers ball one. And Sorensen we saw in the field yesterday as well. Right, Sorensen played second base in the second half of the doubleheader and was able to draw a couple walks as most Cougars were in that second game. <laughs> Had a single as well, but key part playing second base then and pitching now. And at this level, there's a lot of guys that are able to play multiple positions like that. Not as usual as you'd see at the high school level. Usually in high school that you start to determine where the pitchers are, where the fielders are, and you typically take the bat out of the pitcher's hands once they make it to that junior varsity and varsity level at in high school. But Sorensen still making an impact on both sides of the ball. 3-1 here, that one just... A bit low on Sarah, and he'll jog to first. So one run all the way in. Kit Wigington will come to the plate, as we mentioned, DHing for UCCS today. And we saw Wigington just once yesterday in that last inning of play as Dave Hadjik was trying to get his squad rolling down a couple runs in the bottom of the seventh, but Kit unable to make a play there. We'll get some hacks today. Swings through strike one to get you the lineups. Batting order-wise, first for UCCS, Hayden Iverson leading things off in left field. McCauley Sarah at second base is batting second. Kit Wigington, you see him here in the three-hole doing the DHing for UCCS with Caleb Stubbings waiting on deck in the cleanup spot. Casey Campbell out and right batting fifth. Tyler Richardson behind the plate as this one clips McCauley Sarah. That looked like it hit him in the... That left arm as he's holding it there. The trainer's going to come out and check on him. His time is called on the field. Important part of this Mountain Lion team, McCauley Sarah is. Hopefully it's just a stinger type situation like when you get hit by a pitch. But like he's in some deal of pain as Dave Hadwick comes over third base. To finish out the order, though, for UCCS as they continue to check out McCauley Sayre. Vander Hodges over at third base. He's in the seven hole. Aaron Brackle batting eighth in center field. And Ronan Hella will be at shortstop in the nine hole as we get back to playing here 0 and 1 on Kit Wigington. And he. Takes a low ball, one and one. Pretty much straight up defense, a little bit shaded towards second base. He is Colton Walton at shortstop. Another check over to McCauley Sayre, and he gingerly dives back to the bag after being plunked the first time around. As that one swung on and missed. Wigington behind one and two. As that one's chopped foul, one and two. Again, we'll try things out, trying to stretch his league slowly back out as McCauley Sarah at first base. The one two to the plate, fastball softly chopped to second base. Could be two up the line. Wigington can't quite get there. Double play for CCU. And after that leadoff home run, they erase both batters on the base paths. And that'll bring up Caleb Stubbings. Nobody on and two out. Looked like UCCS was going to get off to another hot start there, but after the Iverson home run, infield does its job beautifully to make that double play happen. That one low and away to open the at-bat to Stubbings. 
Charging on that one was Flores as he was away from second base, allowed him to get to the ball quicker to make sure they could turn it. Beautiful replay there of that double play, just getting Wigginton by a hair. Two and no here on Caleb Stubbings. Casey Campbell on deck, hoping he'll have an at bat in the inning. The 2 0. That one's low and away to, or excuse me, 3 0. Rio once again outside. That one, the left hander's batter's box, and that will push the inning to Campbell on deck. Casey Campbell yesterday had a pretty solid day out in right field defensively and able to draw a walk and a, had a single in the first game and three straight flyouts to center, if I remember correctly. That's right, and he gets plunked, it looked like, here. Thought that hit him, but Campbell's not making any case to the home plate umpire, which is usually a pretty good sign that it didn't hit him. But 1-0 and oh, either way is working ahead as the Mount Lions right fielder. You'll see the umpire again like we talked about yesterday, just giving his catcher... A little time to get himself together after look like he may have gotten dinged up on that play. Hornson once again set. That one catches the outside corner, though it wasn't handled behind the plate by Medina. And the count even at one and one. The 1-1, one, one. curveball drops in there. Nice movement on that pitch from Sorensen. One and two. Sorensen's struggled to throw strikes here, but still got those two outs. One, two, that one doesn't break. Stays outside, two and two, so twos are wild on the board. As... Wonderful day for baseball here on this Sunday, the second day of April. Another 2-2. Two -two. That one, strike three, called on the outside half. Campbell goes down looking, but the mount line strike first, the very first pitch of the game. Hayden Iverson deposits it over. The wall in center field and the mountain lines up a run as we head to the second inning. Luke Thompson leading things off here in the second inning for the Cougars takes low for ball one as, or excuse me, John Hoffman back on the mound with his ice cream, ice cream green, easy for me to say, glove out there on the mound. 
Well, it's all about, you know, when you're pitching, you want to look good, you want to feel good, you play good. So. Seen a couple of those ice cream green gloves out there on the mound. Northern Colorado also had several pitchers rocking that color glove. Very unique. That one falls in there, though, on the fastball. Two and one as Thompson, who we saw behind the plate in game one, doing the DH in game two and three, and he knocks it up the middle of the field for a base hit to lead things off here. Second straight inning, the leadoff runner has reached for CCU. Very clean hitting, just stroke through the middle and puts that ball out in the center field for the leadoff runner. That'll bring up Bodie Flores. He played game one at third, slid over to second base in game two. Takes for strike one on Hoffman. That one, check swing. Did he go? That looked like a good pitch either way. Call the ball, and he did indeed hold up. So one and one, the new count on Bodie Flores. Flores, one of two players yesterday to... Leave the yard with a homer, Hayden Iverson, the other. That one catches the outside corner. One and two on Flores. One, two. This one's hit well into right field. This is going to get to the wall. Going first to third is Thompson. Up with it, Campbell. They are going to hold Thompson up at third base, but a double for Bodie Flores and a couple of runners in scoring position, nobody out for Major Maiden. Campbell quick to the ball to recover that one and not sure if Thompson would have been able to make that one with a nice throw out from right field, but certainly threatening with no outs. That one looked like a slider out of the hands of John Hoffman. Runs a little too far and falls outside for ball one. one -oh again low. Like you mentioned, Hoffman's been hot and cold this year. He was a Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Week in late February for uh, two appearances where he allowed just two runs on six hits with a 2.25 ERA. So he's shown he can definitely, definitely deal when he's in that spot. A high chopper fades foul. Turning to the plate is Major Maiden and heck, the third base is Luke Thompson. Bodie Flores was not not moving. He he had that pose at second base the whole time. He knew it was going foul. Three and one at the plate on Maiden. The three one. That one gets past. Ball four into score from third base is Luke Thompson tying the game at one. And still trouble for UCCS. Runners on the corners, nobody out as Russell Cruz will take his turn. We saw that once or twice yesterday. Just catcher trying to get in front of it, but tough pitch to stay in front of. And the Cougars will not apologize for that free run. It's tough here at Mount Lion Park with the turf infield. To judge those hops behind the plate, it tends to skip more than it would bounce in a traditional sand infield. So presents an extra level of challenge. It's just little things too sometimes that you don't you just gotta get used to it and this one's hit well to center field. Going back is Brackle reaching up. It's gonna hop the wall and come back. Chasing it down still, coming into second base and stopping there. Into score is both runners. 
and it's a 3-1 lead in the second inning for CCU. Great piece of hitting anywhere besides the batter's eye. That one would have been out of here as it was on top of the wall, but stays in play, and Cruz will be aboard with a double. Two RBIs for Cruz. Hoffman still with traffic out there. Cruz at second. Nobody out in the inning. Three runs already in. Ball one high. Aaron Morgan. one oh again. Leaving that one up is Morgan. 2-0. That will trigger a mound visit as Mark Lee, the pitching coach for UCCS, making his way out to the mound. Conversation with his pitcher. Recap of the inning, Luke Thompson took the first pitch he saw, knocked it into center field for a base hit. Bodie Flores followed that up with a double. Second and third, Major Maiden walked, but a wild pitch moved Thompson in. And Flores to third, and with a first and third situation, nobody out. Russell Cruz doubling over the head of Brackle in center field. He's at second base. Both runners scored on the play, and that's where we stand as Morgan had in his count two balls and no strikes. Hoffman had a pretty solid first inning. I did allow a hit and a walk, but his defense getting it done on a thrown out runner strikeout and struggling to get the first out here well the first mound visit charged the UCCS here in the second inning good time to take it though for UCCS as Hoffman struggling early the 2-0 this one lifted out a play foul 2-1 and one. talked about this yesterday for pitchers especially with UCCS, trying to do it all themselves. And at some point, you just kind of have to let that go and, and pound the zone, use the defense behind you. This one is a perfect example. This one going back. Casey Campbell makes the catch on the warning track. He'll throw the ball back in, tagging and moving up is Russell Cruz, but one out in the inning, and the Mountain Lions needed to put somebody away they do so there as Aaron Morgan down on a long out. I thought Campbell did a great job there of ranging back to find that one. It's tough when you're running full bore at the chain link fence out there. You saw him kind of kind of pressure and make sure he gets himself off of it, but definitely not an easy play to make. See on the broadcast angle, it looks like there's that padding around, but in reality, that's just kind of a, a green latch screen in the chain link. So you're running into those metal links when you're going out there full speed. 2-0 pitch here as backup Frankie Shern for the second time. He walked his first time up on four pitches, and he's yet to see a strike. He's... Up 3-0 here. That one is going to be a called strike on the outside half, 3-1. and one. That's going to be a red light all day from the third base coach. Just let's make Hoffman prove he can beat us with the strikes. 3-1. Swung on, foul tip. Hell, doesn't matter with two strikes, so the count is full. See if Hoffman... Finding out would be a big one here. The 3 2 fouled back will do it again. A couple of hikers out this morning. We've got some vigils up there on the rock above right field in the field below the big rock up pulpit. There is some spectators on top as well, taking in the baseball game from afar. If you get the chance when you're in Colorado Springs, definitely walk up there and 
as you can see, checking out the game. Here's our two friends out there. Strike three called at the plate. Hoffman comes back with the outside heater and rings up Shern looking a big strikeout for UCCS. And they can get out of it if they can get a ground ball from Walton. Hoffman was looking for anything. Strikeout, pop fly there. Keep it in the infield and gets the job done. As this one is on the ground. Nice pick up Sarah. The flip throw. He gets the out at first base. What a play. McCauley Sarah ranging to his right. Makes the play and ends the threat for CCU. Three runs in the inning. They take a lead to the bottom half of the inning. Here's the instant replay. Yeah. Well, lines that one up the middle. Sarah thought that was going to get up the middle. Turns the body, makes the long throw. Stubbings giving props where it's due, and UCCS gets out of the inning. There's a look up on top of Pulpit Rock of a couple hikers taking in some baseball from on top of the hill as Tyler Richardson leading things off at the plate for UCCS. Sorensen still on the mound for CCU as that one's high. 2-0 and on Richardson as beautiful day here as we mentioned in the low 60s. Little light breeze, nothing like yesterday, though. The wind yesterday was a little chilly, but kind of that nice calming breeze today as it's 3-0 and on Richardson. Saw a lot of pop flies yesterday that were heavily impacted by the wind, foul balls. Might not have that same impact today, but certainly a factor. 3-0 to Richardson. That one's right down the middle, taking the whole time. It was a Mountain Lions catcher, 3-1. and one. Yeah, you mentioned you can see the flag out there in center field. Just kind of that calm Sunday breeze. 3-1 to Richardson. That one's inside. A good curveball. Nice movement on it, but it stays inside. And Richardson jogs to first as the leadoff runner on for UCCS. That'll be the third walk thus far for Saxton Sorensen. And the fifth of the game, I believe. Six of the game, pardon me. Sorensen comes into the game at 12.3 ERA. One and four in decisions. This will be his eighth start of the season. That one's inside on Hodges. A little bit more of a friendly, hey, how you doing on first base as Sorensen, maybe not the fastest pickoff move he's ever tried. Richardson not in big threat to steal, but he will move up if he gets the opportunity. 1-1 one, one on Hodges as he takes for strike one outside. Another check over to Richardson. 
Easily dives back. Mike Carpenter, the first base coach for UCCS, helping his base runners out. The 1-1. One, one. That one just below the knees. 2-1 and one on Hodges. Talked about two-way players. Hodges, one of those for UCCS. You'll see him come in late in games, kind of that closer for UCCS as he also... It's like Major Maiden lost his hat <laughs> down the first baseline. Wind heard what we were saying about it, decided to make its presence known. Timeout called so Maiden can go retrieve his lid. And another check over to first base. Another 2-1, that one just above the letters, dropped in in the strike zone, but crossed the plate before it broke and was above the letters. 3-1 and one on Hodges. Three one pitch, that one called on the inside corner, kind of a 50-50 pitch as the mount line still working out the strike zone of Gauman behind the plate. Mountain Lions have done a good job so far working counts, getting that pitch count up with the uh, exception of Hayden Iverson's homer. There goes Richardson. This one's lined into the corner. It's a foul ball. Would have been a run for UCCS as it would have kicked around. Richardson was on the move. But having to return to first base across the infield is Richardson. And back to the batter's box, Vander Hodges nearly doing damage. Those are the worst when you're a runner. Take off, get a great jump, and then you got to walk all the way back. Another 3-2 on its way from Sorensen. Again, Richardson goes on the ground to second base. It's a good thing Richardson went with the pitch. That would have been a double play, but up to second because of the early movement is Tyler Richardson, and Hodges is erased at first on the grounder. You'll see sometimes runners time it perfectly where they're able to maybe throw off the timing a little bit, throw off the ability to read the hop, but not much doing there as the second baseman, Bodie Flores, handles that one cleanly. It's not often, especially with the extended run all the way around to third on the long foul ball from Hodges that you see back-to-back steal attempts like that usually – that base runner will want to take the extra pitch to kind of get their breath back, get a better lead, kind of think through that timing of the the pitcher's windup. But back-to-back -back pitches, Tyler Richardson taking off. It pays off for UCCS. Runner in scoring position as Brackle takes ball two. couple of Aaron's out in center field today. Aaron Morgan out there for CCU. Aaron Brackle for UCCS. The 2-0. That curveball drops in there, 2-1. and one. It's interesting to see how the strike zone, maybe not changed, but a little different for each umpire and trying to find what they like. And obviously we saw that outside corner a popular favorite yesterday. That outside corner was getting called all day in game one. Checking for a moment on second base as that one's called the strike on the inside half. Two and two at the plate. Bodie Floor is kind of bouncing in and out from the second base position to threaten a back pick on Richardson at second. Two and two at the plate on Brackle. Another check back to second. Flores returns. The 2-2 outside. Did he go? They call it at the plate. Out on strikes. Brackle couldn't hold up. And two down and a running and scoring position for Ronan Hella. I thought that was the right call. Obviously a tough angle from up here, but sure looked like he wanted that breaking pitch that just left him hanging. Yeah, from angles like ours where you can't really tell if it went over the plate or not, a good tell is the wrists. There's risks, wrists break, excuse me, and they did go around on that attempt. So called out at the plate. 
Not even a check down to the first base umpire is strike one. In on Ronan Hella. Hayden Iverson, who homered in his first at bat, waits on deck. Open for an at bat here in the bottom of the second inning for the Mountain Lions. Down a couple of runs. The 0 1. Swung on and missed from Hella. 0 and 2. Now, one of my favorite statistics in baseball is how batters the first time around tend to have a worse average against the pitcher. And just as they see him more and more, the game goes, the uh, averages go way up. So, Aiden Iverson certainly will be excited if he can get in. Yeah, Cole Phillip didn't get the memo on that stat yesterday, That's I true. don't think. <laughs> That's one and two now on Hella. And what an outing it was from Cole Phillip yesterday. You got to give him the shout out where it's due because he just really seemed to settle in as he went and got stronger as the game went on. One and two here on Hella. Again, they threaten back to Richardson. Swung on and missed. Went change up and got the early swing out of Ronan Hella. A leadoff walk from Tyler Richardson ends up Going for not as he's stranded at second. And the Cougars look to extend their 3-1 lead in the third. Jordan Medina leading things off here. The top half of the third inning for the Cougars. Three, four, and five due to the plate in the inning for CCU as Medina opens up with a foul ball out of play, 0-1. Both Hoffman and Sorensen have thrown about 40, 41 pitches thus far. Although CCU does hold the advantage by just two runs. Yo, two, just below the knees. Nice spot there from Hoffman, just out of the zone low, looking for the chase, unable to get it. One, two, that one again, just low. Two and two now on Medina. Like we got some remnants of a tumbleweed crossing the field. It's the wind starting to pick back up here. We started talking about how nice it was, so it said, "Oh yeah, I watch this." <laughs> and now that that flag out there in center is whipping. But three and two at the plate. Medina tries to battle back. The payoff pitch outside. And working back from 0-2, Medina jogs to first. We saw the two Mountain Lion hitters unable to kind of hold back on those Sorensen breaking balls. But just a great piece of batting. Watching those pitches was the catcher Medina. It was a good at-bat put together. As that one swung on a miss, went change up and got the fooled swing from Ramos. Kind of did the uh, 
the backyard baseball swim <laughs> swing around on your front foot. Pablo Sanchez. <laughs> well, Carlos Gomez, swing as hard as you can. There you go. Eric Sim. The 1-1 one, one on Ramos. This one's ripped. Just barely misses Medina as he has to twist and turn to get out of the way. And first and second, nobody out. Once again, the first two runners on for CCU. Yeah, we're going to keep coming back to it, I think. But walks, especially on that first batter, just kind of can put your pitcher's head in a funk. Up to second base, Medina will stay put there as he had to make sure that ball didn't hit him. And man, this wind is really picking up now as once again, Hoffman deals inside. You can see on the broadcast, just a ridiculous, the flag just back and forth. 1-0, oh. does that look like another changeup? Misses low, 2-0 oh on Luke Thompson. He singled his first time up, came around to score the first run. It's part of that three-run second inning. Again, Hoffman sets and deals. And again, he misses inside 3-0. Half of Hoffman's pitches have been strikes, the other half balls. So certainly not where you want to be. As you mentioned, want to throw a lot of strikes. Make, your, make them earn it for sure. 3-0. Ball four just below the knees. And headed to first base and loading the bases is Luke Thompson for Bodie Flores. Looks like Stubbings and Hodges will be in on the infield grass, but in middle infield looking for that double play. First pitch from Hoffman. This one's lifted. This is going to be trouble for UCCS. It's going to get down off the wall, and it hit the scoreboard. That's a grand slam for CCU. And all of a sudden, a six-run lead, 7-1. to one. And the most efficient type of offense you can get as Bodie Flores takes the first pitch he sees and knocks it off the board. That'll be Flores' second home run of the year, and what a way to do it. Absolutely hammers that one off the scoreboard in left center and calls a group meeting at home plate with the three runners. Hoffman definitely going to have to eat up some time now for UCCS down six runs. No action in the bullpen for the Mountain Lions. So you see the replay of the Grand Slam. Still no outs in the inning for UCCS. Wind was blowing left to right there and didn't have much impact as Flores hammered that one. And striking out at the plate, so a big out there as Maiden goes down. And Russell Cruz will come to the plate. So the first four runners not only reaching, but all scoring before and out is even recorded here in the third inning. Defensively for the Mount Lions, that one fouled off. Cruz had some real power in his first at bat with the swing that would have gone over the fence anywhere else, but off the batter's eye behind Brackle in center. So this Cougar offense really getting going early. 0-2 here on Cruz. The pitch, that one high and out. 1-2. and two. UCCS finds themselves in a six-run hole early in this one. 1-2. Strike three called on the outside corner and back-to-back -back strikeouts is a nice response from John Hoffman. It's all about how you bounce back and Hoffman doing a nice job there. 
That will bring up Aaron Morgan. He flew out to Casey Campbell his first time up on a long out just in front of the fence. That one misses below the knees. This one's on the ground to Hello. This should end the inning, and a nice easy play from the Mountain Lions shortstop gets him out of it, but the first four runners all reach, and then a grand slam from Bodie Flores has a six-run lead for the Cougars. We head to the bottom of the third. Hayden Iverson in the top of the Mount Lions lineup up at the plate in their half of the third inning. Iverson, the first pitch he saw in this game, he took over the center field wall, the only run for UCCS, down 7-1. As that curveball, nice drop in over the plate. Could have banged that one too. It was kind of hung a little bit out of the hands of Sorensen, but drops in for strike one. That one's outside, one and one. Iverson's home run in the first, also the only hit so far as the Mountain Lions have accumulated a couple runners on walks, but no one the natural way through hits. Two and one on Iverson as Sorensen has been efficient. Another offering on its way. This one's bounced to short. Nice pickup over there, but couldn't keep it in his glove by Walton. We'll see how that one is scored. And it is going to be an error. So still looking for their second hit is UCCS, but reaching on the error for the first base runner of the inning is Hayden Iverson. That's an extremely tough play to make. You're running in and you kind of throw your glove while it's bouncing and thought Walton well, might be able to come up with it. Kind Excuse of an me. in between hop, yeah, is kind of that that do I come in, do I take a step back? And electing to charge on it, not quite able to keep it in his glove was Walton. Iverson, a quick runner, able to put that pressure to say, hey, you can't just Take this one easy. You got to come in on it. So and he does take off there. The throw's going to go to second. Out at second base. Iverson thought he got his hand in. Was a strike at the plate on McCulley Sayers. He swung. And the leadoff base runner, a race trying to steal. Second caught stealing we've seen today. We'll see if there's a replay, but just a ridiculous throw that looked like it beat the runner. I'm not sure if. Iverson, I thought he might have got in under the tag, but. This one's on the ground, a shortstop, trying to outrun it is Sare, but he is out number two, and that will bring up Wigington. We'll take you back to the, for the instant replay here. Nice jump from Iverson. 
throw down. Looks like it beat him. That's a close play, and Iverson not getting the call that he obviously wanted for the first out of the inning. As that one is going to drop in there for strike one on Wigington. His first time up, he grounded into a double play to race McCauley Sayre at second base. Second pitch misses, one and one. That one's low as well. Wigington, you mentioned we didn't see him until a pitch hitting situation late in game two. Popped out foul, was unable to do any damage. This one on the ground to a little bit shaded Walton. He'll throw across the mount lines, get a leadoff runner on an error. Caught stealing erases him, and they end up going down in order. So we head to the top of the fourth inning. Cougars still up six. Welcome back to Mountain Lion Park as Shern lays down a bunt. Hoffman ranges over, will make not make a throw as Shern will have a infield hit. It'll it'll look like as the left fielder wasting no time to lay down that bunt. Yeah, tough play there for Hoffman too, ranging to his right. As a lefty, too, he had to spin around to orient himself towards first base, not able to make the throw. That'll bring up Caden Walton, shortstop. Two plate appearances so far, but struck out and grounded out as the runner will take off. This one slapped down the right field by Walton. Campbell's in the corner, and it'll be coming around as Shern to score. And the Cougars piling on the runs as they score in the top of the fourth. A hit and run on there for CCU, pays off as off with the pitch with Shearn and an easy run there as he was already moving. Mountain Lions have yet to get an out on the first batter of each inning as this one's lifted to left field. That one's going to be foul. Wind died down a little bit there as Jordan Medina went well over the fence in left field, but stays stays just a bit foul. So it'll be foul back for 0-2. Medina singled in the first inning. Started off the third inning with a walk. Was able to come all the way around the bases on that Bodie Flores grand slam off the scoreboard and left. Softens back one and two. First time we've seen any action in the Mountain Lions pen as they've got a right-hander up. Hoffman's thrown. Just shy of 70 pitches, so we'll see if his day's done in this next half inning here. Medina swings and misses. 
And that'll be strike three on the catcher as Hoffman gets a much needed out. When he's on, he's been on. He's had a couple strikeouts today, but the walks and eight hits on the board for the Cougars has really opened this game up. Gabe Ramos will take his third appearance at the plate. Grounded out to the pitcher Hoffman in the first inning. Singled. As it looks like we'll have a short meeting between Gabe Ramos and the third base coach. Talking a little bit of strategy, deciding what we how we want to attack this at bat. So we'll get a great look at the navy blue cougar uniforms. Striped pants, always a favorite of mine when we're watching baseball. As that pitch will find the zone, 0-2. Oh Walton standing on second. That pitch rushes back Ramos. Walton reached with that slap hit down the line and right. We'll go at one and two. This one's hammered to right field as well. Ramos, Campbell back. Not going to be able to catch that one as Gabe Ramos hits a two-run homer here in the top of the fourth. They're just piling on now are the Cougars as they continue to produce from the plate the second big fly of the day. And I think that's going to end the outing for Hoffman. We will be right back with a pitching change as the Cougars celebrate their 10-1 to 1 lead here in top of four. Here's the replay of that Gabe Ramos home run. Just a no-doubter. Knew it. Campbell gave it a thought, but that ball cleared the fence pretty easily. We'll return with a new pitcher right after this. On the bump for the Mountain Lions, it'll be Richard's sophomore right-hander Hayden Zweig making his eighth appearance on the year. Pitched one in one-third inning, 
in his last appearance against Colorado State Pueblo. We'll get to face the left-handed DH, Luke Thompson. Dave Hadjik decided John Hoffman's day was done after Gabe Ramos hit a two-run shot out to right field. As Thompson will go down two and two. Thompson singled, start off the second inning, walked in the third inning, has scored both times, and we'll see what he can do at his third plate appearance at two and two. This one's lifted, playable on the infield. Vander Hodges will come all the way over from third to make that play. Wind certainly made an impact on that ball, but nothing doing as that'll be the first out of the inning for Hayden Zweig. So it'll be Bodie Flores doubled in his first appearance, scored there, and then hit that grand slam off the scoreboard in left center. We'll get an opportunity to go three for three. Off the nub, and that one looked like it hurt from behind the dish. Tyler Richardson kind of grimacing there. That went in on the hands, I think. Yeah, it never feels good when you get that that ball in on the palm of your glove, kind of like when you hit it off the end of the bat, you get that, that discomfort vibration down into your hand. It'll be 0-2. Over to third base, Hodges. Comes over to make the play, and that'll be the third out of the inning. Three runs of damage done in the top of the fourth as Sun is going to disappear, and we will be right back in the bottom of the fourth. So it'll be four, five, six for this mountain lion offense in a big hole here in the bottom of the fourth, down 10 to one as Saxton Sorensen has pitched a gem through three. Stubbings walked on four straight pitches in his first at bat in the first inning. We're gonna get things started. You mentioned Sorensen, really that one first pitch hanging curveball to Iverson that he was ready for. The only mistake we've seen from Sorensen on the mound today. As Stubbings will 
take the free stroll to first base after he faces four straight balls again. Got a seven game hit streak on the line today, but has yet to see a strike, so. Casey Campbell, left-handed right fielder will enter the batter's box. And look at strike one. Campbell struck out in his first plate appearance to end the first inning and has had his hands full out in right field. Sun as clouds are covering it up a little bit. Hopefully we'll see the sun back. As that'll be two and one to Campbell. A pickoff move from Sorensen, I think, is just to remind the runners to know he's there, but certainly looks a little lackadaisical sometimes. Yeah, Stubbings didn't look like his dive was very uh, motivated. Campbell pokes this one high, chopper. That's going to be a tough play, barehanded by Walton. And Stubbings will take off for third. Sorensen handles it, unable to make the play as Stubbings with some heads-up base running. Looks like he might have been hot in his tracks there, but Sorensen couldn't get the tag down as <laughs> Stubbings will reach. Here's the replay. There was nobody covering third base. We'll look at the slow-mo. Did he get the tag down? The nice swim move. It looks like he did get his foot in. That's great work from our camera crew here. And Stubbings... As he rounded second base, noticed nobody over there at third. Turned it into first and third for UCCS. Richardson will file that one back as Campbell will receive a single. And Stubbings will receive my respect with that incredible <laughs> base running. You see guys with heads up running. Look, I thought he was going to get tagged, but just kind of slid in. And he will take the free base and the highlight. And a tough play on the initial ball from Campbell as well. Softly hit high in the air in the infield. Got past Sorensen. And by the time it got to Walton at shortstop, Campbell was at first base. So no play on either runner. And then obviously Stubbings trying to move up. Sorensen tried to get there. Couldn't quite make the play. Richardson will hit this one softly to the shortstop, go to second for one. Richardson called out at first. Close play. Stubbings was around to score. But Saxton getting two for the price of one. As very, very close play at first. Yeah, I thought that Richardson may have been there at first base, but a close play either way called out. The Mountain Lions do get the run back. Vander Hodges will step into the box, ground it out in his first at bat. This one's lined to center field, and Hodges is aboard with a two out single to center. Now that Double play hurts a little bit more. Would have been runs on the single for UCCS, but Hodges extending the inning. So it'll be Aaron Brackle in the eight spot. Center fielder has struck out once today. As Hodges will keep, keep the catcher honest, make sure he's not taking his mind off the runners, even though there are two outs. And we'll go at 2-0. and oh. Great pitch from Sorensen catching that corner. Sorensen will check the runner and now deal. That one finds the zone as well for 1-2. and two.
And that'll be strike three. Brackle down on strikes for the second time, and Saxton Sorensen gets out of the bottom of the fourth with just run one run scored, and we will be right back as the Cougars lead 10-2. to The majestic mountain lion, one of nature's most powerful predators, primarily indigenous to the Americas, this big cat is known to make its home just about anywhere. Although most consider them to be solitary in nature, these big cats actually show advanced social intelligence. This cat is known to be territorial, and as such will fiercely defend its territory from other big cats, employing a blend of power and stealth except during courtship. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. It'll be mountain lion defense here as Hayden Zwag returns to the bump as we will officially close the book on John Hoffman's day. Yeah, Hoffman just going three and a third, giving up nine hits. The big blemish, though, is the four walks as, again, the mountain lions for the second straight day struggling to throw strikes yeah. through 75 and couldn't quite find his command today walking for 10 runs in all earned maiden lifts this one to right field stubbings back brackle back oh campbell makes a play and we got two mountain lines down on the collision he it's, made the catch the out is called but look like campbell and i believe that was mccully sarah gliding on that play we'll Take a look. See the replay here. Stubbings was backtracking, and I believe it was Campbell that made the play he did, but it ran into that that right arm, or excuse me, that left arm of McCauley Sayre, and both of the trainers are going to be on their way out. We will step back here and make sure the mountain lines are okay. We'll be right right back after this.
So we will return to Mountain Lion Park, Macaulay Sayre, and Casey Campbell colliding on that play. Not sure on what all occurred, but they have both been taken out of this game as Mason Pastorello will come in at second base for Sayre, and it'll be Dylan Morais out in right field. That'll be number two. It shows the importance of communication in the outfield, especially when you're going out from the infield, coming in to make sure you're talking to each other, knowing where everybody is. And we hope that both Campbell and Sarah are okay. Foul ball there. Not sure if he made the play. Looks like it did drop in that corner. A tough play as he race just into the game. Ranging long to his left. So it'll be Russell Cruz in the batter's box, the third baseman for the Cougars. Cruz doubled the center in his first at bat and struck out in his second. will wave at strike two and the umpire says nothing doing that'll be ball one obviously a very scary situation as players will do their best to keep their composure you never want to see Anybody down on the field like that is striking out his crews, but we just hope that both Sayre and Campbell are okay and there's no long-term implications for either. So two away here in the top of five. Maiden flew out, Cruz struck out, so it'll be the center fielder in the nine spot, Aaron Morgan. who's 0-2 on the day. We'll foul that one off. Zwag will deal. That'll be strike number two. Zwag has pitched very well since he's come in. He's retired the first four he has faced since replacing Hoffman. That one is waved at, and that'll be strike three. As down on strikes is Aaron Morgan, 
And Hayden's way goes one, two, three in the top of five. As we will return in just a minute with Mountain Lion Offense. Entering the game on the bump for the Cougars, it'll be number eight, Cole Kennedy, a right-handed pitcher out of Newbury Park, California. Junior for the Cougars has appeared nine games. This will be his 10th, and will face the bottom of the order in Ronan Hella. And we'll start off with a one-and-one -one count. Sorensen ends his day. He goes four innings, three hits, just two runs for you, uh, scored for UCCS, excuse me, both earned. Four walks, four strikeouts. He's faced 17 Mountain Lions and threw 69 tosses. So, a very good day for the starter for CCU. I love one of those strikeout victims for Sorensen. We'll get his second at bat. And we'll tap this one foul. Hella has been a staple as a freshman at shortstop. Has hit pretty well this season, just under 300. As that pitch will be just above his head. Nice job dropping his bat down. If he kept his bat up, that probably would have clanked off it for a foul ball, but pulling the bat down as well as he ducked out of the way two and two. Ella, a pair of singles through both games yesterday and walked once or twice. We'll get his second plate appearance. And the batter's in the uh, on-deck circle, excuse me, Hayden Iverson. Has reached twice, homered in that first inning on the on the first appearance for the Mountain Lion offense. As Hella will foul another one back. Kennedy enters the game with a two and one record in his Nine appearances, has started three games. And we'll get 
his first out of the afternoon with a strikeout of Ronan Hella, and that'll bring around the top of the order with left fielder Hayden Iverson. Yeah, what breaking ball looked like the change in speed is what pulled Ronan Hella way out on his front foot and no chance of making contact with that one. This one's ripped to left field. That one does not have a chance to stay in the park as Hayden Iverson has a two home run game this afternoon. Second home run, as you mentioned, also the first pitch. He just likes the first pitch he sees off a new pitcher, I guess, and went center field this first time. This time went against the wind into left field, a no doubter off the bat of Iverson. We'll take a look at the replay here. That one just slammed to left field. That one, no chance staying in. You saw it tail off with the wind, but no way it's staying in the park. As we will see the first this weekend from Mason Pastorella, who came in after a scary collision between Campbell and Sayre last inning. So Mason Pastorella will bat in the second spot. That one's ripped down the right field line. Pastorello's going to be on board. And that one is out of here. Mason Pastorello with the opposite field home run. As I thought that ball might get down, but that cleared the wall out in right field. The wind's blowing out there. Might have helped Mason just a little bit. I was with you. It looked like it was going to hit off the wall and... Would have been trouble either way as Mason Passarello has a bunch of speed, but he gets his first home run of the season and Passarello making an impact right into the offensive lineup for the Mountain Lions. So after Hella struck out back-to-back -back home runs from Mountain Lion offense as we are now at 10-4 to and we'll see Kit Wigington who certainly is a deep ball threat for this UCCS offense. We'll take a look at the home run here. Pastorello just going with the pitch, taking it opposite field. Can't get more opposite field than that right down by the flat, or the foul pole, excuse me. Pastorello with his first of the year. You can see his teammates on that replay excited for Pastorello, a redshirt sophomore, right? From right here in Colorado Springs, Colorado, but like you said, more of a speed guy hitting his first home run on the year. His teammates surely happy for him. Doesn't get a lot of home runs very often, does Mason Passerell. More of that, like we said, just kind of throwing out base hits, stretching them to doubles, using his speed, but showing off the power here. As it looks like. Cole Kennedy is clearly shaken up a little bit as he's faced three batters and two of them have rung the bell already. Three and two to Wigington, and that'll be ball number four. Wigington is aboard for the first time this afternoon. Caleb Stubbings is a home run threat himself. He excuse me, didn't have any home runs yesterday, but knocked one off of the scoreboard against CSU Pueblo about a week and a half ago now. Stubbings walked twice today and has yet to see a pitch in the strike zone. Walked on four straight in the first and then four straight in the fourth, so has an opportunity with Wigington on first base. And he will get his first swing of the day. As we mentioned before, a seven-game hitting streak on the line for Stubbings. Hasn't seen a strike until that swing. Walking on four pitches his first two times up. Got to make it happen. May not get another opportunity in this game. Kennedy will deal one and one. 
That'll be high for ball number two. Stubbing, certainly a intimidating individual standing in that batter's box. No, he has a ton of power. Is so calm facing this right-hander. That one's hammered out to center field. This one's got a chance. And that is three home runs in the inning as Caleb Stubbings takes Cole Kennedy deep to right center field. And that'll be a two-run home run for the Mountain Lion offense. Fourth of the season for Caleb Stubbings. And like we said, a threat himself and already rushing to get somebody up in the bullpen for CCU. Hasn't been the outing they wanted from Kennedy, who kind of the same thing we saw after a strong start in game one yesterday from Caro as we get the replay here, just hang in that curveball. And Caleb Stubbings made no mistake taking it over there. Oh, the big hill just to the right of the batter's eye. Dylan Morais makes his way in for his first at bat. So after a strikeout started the inning from Ronan Hella, three mountain lions have gone deep. Kit Wigginton walked in the middle there, but Hayden Iverson, then Mason Pastorello, and finally Caleb Stubbings as Dylan Morais will get his first attempt in the batter's box this weekend. Leadoff strikeout for Hella is the only out in the inning. And all of a sudden, it's just a four-run game. Four runs already in in the inning for UCCS and not an insurmountable task by any stretch. Kennedy deals, and it'll be 2-1 to Marais. Marais, a senior, plays outfield, has appeared a couple times. So far this season, six games, eight at-bats. And he'll slap that one into right, and that'll get down for a hit. As Dylan Marais getting in on the fun, slapping that one to right for a single. First hit in the inning that was not a home run. And the first hit of the year for Dylan Morace as well. A great piece of hitting. Cole Kennedy struggling to get Mountain Lions to have a seat on the bench, as we will see Tyler Richardson. Richardson walked in the second inning, grounded into that double play in the fourth. But it's been all offense here in the fifth inning as the Mountain Lions are trying to mount a comeback. Richardson nubs that one. We'll go at one and one. So after not a lot of home runs yesterday, just two from both teams combined and those two games, we already have a couple home runs as we'll go to second base for one. And Richardson will ground into his second double play of the game, and that'll end the inning for the Mountain Lions. But the story of the fifth inning, three home runs as Hayden Iverson, Mason Pastorello, and Caleb Stubbings all leave the park 10-6 here at Mountain Lion Park.
Welcome back to Mountain Lion Park as the Mountain Lions put up a four spot in the fifth inning. Closing that gap, it's 10 to six now as we will see the top of the Cougar order in Frankie Schoen. Also entering the game defensively is Luis Samarano out in center field taking over the duties of Aaron Brackle. His day is done for now. Samarano, a senior out of Tucson, Arizona. The last remaining outfielder to start this game is Hayden Iverson, but something tells me he's not going anywhere with two home runs in this game. Yeah, some great hitting from Hayden Iverson, who stands out in left field. Not often you get a two home run game, a special day here for Iverson as that pitch is just a little bit outside. It'll be Frankie Schoen to start off inning number six. Schoen walked and was caught stealing in the first, struck out in the second, and singled in the fourth inning. As he will go full count here in first batter. Zweig deals, grounder, Hodges makes the throw. Strong nice. play at third base from number 34 in Hodges to retire the first batter of the inning. Showing off the gun he's got over there. Had to make a quick transfer in. Strong throw over to first to get Shern, who moves well. Make no mistake about it. Hodges showing off the arm, getting the out. Caden Walton gets his fourth plate appearance. Struck out in the first, grounded out in the second, and had a double back in the fourth inning. As Hayden Zweig has pitched well thus far, had a three up, three down, with two strikeouts back in the fifth. And that will not stay as Caden Walton rips one up the middle for a single. After the first day yesterday, we didn't see a whole lot of substitutions, one or two in between games, but not a whole lot during the game. We've seen quite a few from Dave Hadjik's squad so far. Jordan Medina lifts this one out of play. Dana, a senior from right here in Colorado, Lone Tree, attended Highlands Ranch High School. Falcons Highlands Ranch High School. They've got a good baseball club up there. Shout out to all the Falcons watching. Let's see what Medina can do here. Dana had a single in the first, walked in the third, and Struck out in the fourth and has a one and one count against right hander's leg. Walton messing around at first base. Got a runner call out of Caleb Stubbings over there at first. Making sure that his team's keeping track. So it deals. Medina rips this one to center. That looks playable out there for Samarano, and he'll get his first put out of the afternoon as Medina is retired for out number two. Whenever you sub in, the ball seems to find you, and Samarano gets his first opportunity there. Brace ended up not getting an official opportunity, but had a chance to track one down after a long run in the corner in right field. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get there, but always seems to find you when you 
Coming to the game. It'll be Gabe Ramos in the left-handed batter's box. Ramos has had a good day at the dish so far. Grounded out to the pitcher to start, but had a single. Scored on that grand slam from Bodie Flores, and then doing some more damage with a two-run homer back in the fourth. So you will get a favorable matchup here with Zweig. That'll be ball number two as Swag giving everyone a second to take a breath. <laughs> Takes his time out there. A little bit different from what we saw yesterday with, with Philip, who goes right at the batter. Definitely depends on your play style, how you like to attack hitters. It's all about your routine as a pitcher. You want to stay comfortable, make sure you're doing things the same way, and that's going to lead to replication and good success. But Swag, definitely much more methodical in his delivery. Good block behind the plate from Tyler Richardson there. So we'll go to three and two. Two away here in top of six. That Can't. one looked like it bounced behind the batter. Able to still get to it with Richardson. It's had a busy day. As we'll see, the payoff pitch, Walton runs. And a big bat toss from Gabe Ramos. But he is aboard. Walton will advance 90 feet to second base. be the DH today, Luke Thompson, singled in the second inning, walked in the third, flew out in the fourth. So the lefty will get his fourth appearance, and we'll send that one to second base, unable to make the play at second base is Pastorello. Walton's around to score. Ramos will take third base, and we'll see how that one gets scored, but the Cougars had two outs, but able to tack on a run. It'll be 11-6. Tough play there for Pastorello. Has to slide to try and get to it. Just hops underneath his glove and ends up hurting the mountain lions. It does look like it's going to go down for a hit. It was, wasn't a routine play there for Pastorello. Thompson will get the credit for the single, and we will see... Hard hitting Bodie Flores. Flores doubled in his first go around. And then one of the bigger plays of the day with that grand slam in the third inning. Zweig deals. This one's lined to center field. This one's back. Samarano unable to make the play. Two runs will score as Bodie Flores has his second double of the day. It, we'll see. A, make sure that that one is scored correctly, but that one was hammered out to center field, right center, and Sam Rano ranged over but couldn't quite make the play as a round of score will be Ramos and Luke Thompson. Almost able to get there was Luis Samarano out there in center field, but just out of his reach and Bodie Flores, a couple RBIs standing on second base. That's a shot, Major Maiden over to second base and Stubbings will make the scoop to end the inning, but three runs of damage after two outs and the Mountain Lions are down seven as we enter the bottom of the sixth inning.
It'll be a bottom of the order in 7-8-9 as Vander Hodges will get the first attempt. And it'll be Luis Samarano. Finally, Ronan Hella as Cole Kennedy is back on the bump as Hodges' first pitch swing and will send this one to short. That is dealt with easily by Walton. And Cole Kennedy, after a three-home run fifth inning, will get the first batter of inning number six. Luis Samarano will get his first at-bat of this doubleheader. And we'll watch strike one. Samarano batting 263 clip. We'll send this one high to right field. This one's got a little bit of a chance. And that one's going to leave the park as Samarano gets a bit of a boost from the wind. But that one will leave the park as Luis Samarano picks up his first home run of the 2023 campaign. Couple of substitutions coming on. Taking their first home runs over the fence in right field as Passarello subbing into the game, doing the same thing. And the Mount Lions, that was extra padding runs, the three that they gave up in the top half of the inning. Sting a little bit as they're trying to get back in this one. Ella grounds over to third, and that'll be the second out of the inning. So Cole Kennedy has been able to get outs here, but has let up four home runs since his entrance. So we'll return to the top of the order. Hayden Iverson, not the guy that Cole Kennedy wants to face. Two home runs already. That one's belted to left field, but that'll be way foul. Iverson is seeing the ball today. That one will give the drivers on Nevada Avenue a scare. That one we'll was out. definitely gone if it was fair. And a rip out to left field. Hayden Iverson as his third hit of the day. Just great hitting so far from the left fielder. Stay hot, Hayden Iverson. Three doubles in game one, a pair of hits in game two as well. And two home runs, a single. He reached on an error, which was a hot shot to the shortstop as well. He is demolishing these baseballs. Iverson cooking at the top of the order. And we will see the second at bat from Mason Pastorello, who's one for one with the home run. Mentioned during the break, Cole Kennedy back on the bump after giving up three Johnsons. Pastorello will look at a 2-0 count. Kennedy will deal. That'll be inside for three straight balls. Pastorello also homered to right field last inning. That ball may be getting a little help from the wind, but Anytime you can put it in play, good things are going to happen. And Mason Pastorell will not apologize for his home, first home run. Pastorello with a nice little move there. We'll return to the batter's box at three and one. Pastorello thought he had ball four there, but called high in the zone, three and one instead. That one will not find the zone as Pastorello is aboard with a walk and some very solid impact from the substitutions as Cole Kennedy's afternoon will be in limbo here. And he will hit the lumber and we will return in just a few minutes with a new Cougar pitcher.
returning back to Mountain Lion Park as the Cougars hold on to a six-run lead as Mountain Lions have two runners on with two outs as Kit Wigington will get his fourth appearance of the day and will face right-handed Johnny T. Winkle, freshman, who appeared yesterday in the first game of the doubleheader, pitched one and two-thirds innings, allowed one run on three hits, a pair of strikeouts, and we'll get to face the left-handed Wigington, who fouls that one back. It'll be the sixth appearance for T. Winkle, and he comes in with a 7.18 earned run average. No decisions yet on his season as he typically comes in in games like this where his impact isn't too important. Iverson stands on second after that hard hit single to left and Mason Pastorello occupies first base after walking on Cole Kennedy's last batter. Pastorello typically a threat on the base pass kind of takes that away with Iverson in front of him. Iverson has good speed himself. Again, 10 fouls that one back, and twos will be wild. We'll give you a quick update from the NCAA National Championship as number three seeded LSU is up 22 to 20 over the Iowa Hawkeyes. And first quarter action. Try to keep you updated. I know my mom will appreciate those updates. <laughs> As Wigginton will line this one into left field. And Iverson will try for home. Pastorella will advance to third. And Wigginton will take second base. As the Mountain Lions continue this sixth inning, adding two more runs. It'll be a single for Wigginton. The advance on the throw, but good base running as he sees it kick away from the catcher Medina behind the plate. Moving up into scoring position for Caleb Stubbings, who has been swinging the bat well lately as well. Home run his last time up, two-run variety. Extending that, that streak as well. Stubbings will lift this one into left field. This one's deep. This one's way out of here as Caleb Stubbings hits his second home run of the day and will bring around three more runs as the Mountain Lions have now dropped this deficit to just two. Caleb Stubbings hyped up after that moonshot to left field. Five RBIs on the day for Caleb Stubbings. Three runs scored himself, and it's a two-run game all of a sudden. Wow, what an at-bat for Stubbings. As the deep ball has been a major, major impact in this first game of the doubleheader. Wigington, who was standing on second base, scored, as well as Mason Pastorello. As Caleb Stubbings, the second mountain lion to have two home runs in this game. As Dylan Morace will go, we'll take a look at the replay. This one just hammered to left field. Cleared the scoreboard again. Second time this season he's done that. Shern could do nothing in left field, but watch as we will see a strike on Dylan Morace, one and two. Morace came in relief of Casey Campbell, had a single in the fifth inning. And we'll foul this one back. Not often you'll see a guy have two home runs in a game, much less two batters, as UCCS has Aiden Iverson and Caleb Stubbings to thank for that. This one's hammered to left field. This one's going to get over the head of Shern. Dylan Morais will round first and stroll into second as he has two hits in two plate appearances 
as Johnny T. Winkle has struggled here in the bottom of the sixth. A double for Morais, nearly lost his footing coming around first base, but able to stride into second and keep the inning going for UCCS. Tying run at the plate now for the Mountain Lions and Tyler Richardson. Richardson struggled so far today, has grounded in the two double plays, walked in the second. As he represents the tying run here in this game. It felt like after those three runs, the Cougars tacked on in top of six, kind of could put away the Mountain Lions, but they have responded in a big way here. Absolutely, it's not over until it's over and the Mountain Lions taking that to heart as they have battled all the way back and they are within striking distance here with two outs, bottom of the sixth inning. So three home runs in the fifth, two in the sixth. As Richardson looks on for one and one. We'll hit this one to center field. This one's deep. This one's off the top of the batter's eye. As Dylan Morais is in to score. Tyler Richardson almost had the longest home run of the day as that one looked to be off the top of the batter's eye. Yeah, just about four or five feet from the top of the batter's eye. Not very much nearly tying this game up, but now they're going to bring in another pitcher as T. Winkle is done for the day. I think we're going to step aside, but when we come back, the go-ahead run, Vander Hodges to the plate. turn and take a quick look at this replay as Tyler Richardson hammers this one off the top of that batter's eye. Just a ridiculous piece of hitting to bring around Dylan Morais. And this game is a one-run ball game as the tying run is on second. Yeah, and as, as you saw that replay, Richardson kind of taking that extra second at the plate, he thought he got it. But Vander Hodges, who led off this inning, comes back up with two outs with a chance to tie this game, even take the lead. So a bunch of home runs, a lot of hits here in the sixth inning as the Mountain Lions have put up a six spot. Vander Hodges grounded out twice thus far and had a single back in the fourth inning. Let off the sixth inning, like you mentioned. We'll have a chance to even up this ball game, even potentially take a lead. We had a pitching change there as Johnny T. Winkle did not receive a word from his skipper. And entering the game is number 15, will be the left hander, J.C. Watney, who appeared yesterday. And will go full against Vander Hodges. Tough take there for Vander Hodges. Was a right decision, though, as it was just off the plate. But right, those kind of close outside pitches, tough to lay off on. 
Three and two, the payoff pitch. Hodges will tap this one, and that'll go foul. We talked about it yesterday, kind of that dream scenario for hitters. Three and two, tying run on for Vander Hodges here with two outs. See if he can come through for the Mount Lions. J.C. Watney, just one inning of work yesterday and only allowed a hit with no runs. So he will have an opportunity to try and maintain the Cougar lead. Vander Hodges disagrees and sends this one into the gap in left center. Around to score is Richardson. Hodges pushing for second, sliding in very gracefully, and we are tied in this ball game. The Mount Lions back from the dead, tying this one up at lucky number 13. Luis Samarano comes back up, had a home run in this inning already. Kind of got things started for UCCS after that leadoff ground out and the Mount Lions have the go-ahead run in scoring position all of a sudden. Seven innings in the sixth inning, courtesy of home runs from Caleb Stubbings, Luis Samarano, and some big hitting from Richardson. And now Vander Hodges, Samarano will look to have a hitter's dream as he can take the lead here for the Mountain Lions. That'll be ball number three as Watney is facing a tough lineup here as everyone uh, for the Mountain Lions has kind of had an opportunity and had the chance and made the difference so far. Taking the whole way there with Sam Morano. Smart play, 3-0 and oh here, two outs. A lot of this has come from with two outs after two of three first batters got out as that one's fouled back for strike two. Hodges, who led off the inning, grounded out. Samarano, who's up now, had a home run, and then Ronan Hella grounded out, but all of that damage coming with two outs. Staying alive is Samarano. We'll go full count again. Vander Hodge is tying up this game, standing on second with that double. As Watney settles. And that'll be another base runner as Samarano is aboard with a walk. And that'll bring around Ronan Hella. Ronan Hella wants to do what, has a chance to do what no hitter wants to do, I should say, and record two outs in the same inning, but has a chance to redeem himself from earlier and help the Mount Lions take the lead. Hella first pitch swinging. The only Mountain Lion thus far without a hit, has an opportunity to help out his team in a big way, like you mentioned. Everybody's been involved. Sparing Hella has a chance to jump in on the action here. 0-1, oh, Watney deals. It'll be ball one. Hella had a good day at the plate yesterday, a couple RBIs in each game, trying to pick up where he left off. J.C. Watney will deal. Ella will ground that one. That's going to be a tough play, but handled by Walton. And that'll be a the third out of the inning. But what an offensive showing from the Mountain Lions as the home team grabs seven runs in the bottom of the six, and we are tied going into the top of the seven. Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention, 
and hands-on experience, UCCF fuels success. I wanted more than a degree. So with innovative courses and affordable tuition, UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. Here at Mount Lion Park, a whole new ball game as we reset with three innings to play, 13 runs apiece. We'll see which team can get the better in the last three frames is leading things off here. Russell Cruz, who has a pair of RBIs and a double in this game, leading things off for the Cougars. Swung on and missed there, one and one, and Brian... What an inning that was, and all of a sudden, it's anybody's game. Yeah, absolutely. A ton of hits in that sixth inning. Two home runs, and we're back level. Is that one trying to pick it off of the turf was Richardson behind the plate, and it gets to the screen, two and one. Doesn't matter with the bases empty. Hayden Zwag still out there for UCCS, and has really... Stopped the skid for the Mountain Lions. That pitch uh, may be missing somewhere. Looked like it was there, but three and one instead. Swung on and missed. Coming back with the nice heater. Gets the Empty swing out of Russell Cruz. Russell Cruz rocking the no batting glove look. I'm always a fan. Reminds me of some of those older ball players. And he will be sent to first base as losing him to balls is Hayden Zwag. And a leadoff runner on for CCUs trying to regain their lead after fumbling a six-run advantage. Swag's gone almost three innings now, and looks like there's someone getting their arm warmed up out in the bullpen. We'll see what Dave Hadjik decides here in seven. Left-hander up in the pen for UCCS. Can't quite tell who that is from our vantage point. Check swing, called a strike either way as Morgan... Both of the nine hole hitters trying to find their first hits today. Next opportunity, this one's grounded foul into the screen in front of the Cougars dugout. 0 and 2. The 0-2, this one's hit well into center field. The wind's going to help this one, and it's going to get down and bounce off the wall. Going first to third and stopping there is Russell Cruz, but right back on the horse offensively, the Cougars trying to strike back. And two runners in scoring position, nobody out for the top of the lineup in Shern. Jake, if you'll believe it, that's the ninth double of the game as both teams have thoroughly messed up all of these pitchers ERAs as we'll have a mound visit here. I do believe it as it just seems like we've been watching people run around the bases today but it looks like that's going to be it for Hayden Zwag as Dave Hadjik out points to the bullpen. We'll be back after a short break but Pitching change first from Mount Lime Park, all square at 13.
Evan Reynolds on to the mound, the 6'2 redshirt sophomore out of Gilbert, Arizona. His first season of action with the Mountain Lions after he redshirted last season as this one's lifted into left field. That's going to get down for a hit. One run will score, and the Cougars will retake the lead. That run will go against Zwag. And Morgan at third base still also the responsibility of Zwag, but one pitch and one hit for Reynolds into the game. It's the second single of the day as Frankie Schoen gives the Cougars an advantage here. Brings up Caden Walton. It's a left-hander on for UCCS. Checks on first. And delivers a low strike to open the at-bat with Walton. It's important for Reynolds to get in the habit of throwing strikes early. And he is doing so here as he's painting the low part of the zone. And it's 0-2 quickly. Go two, that one misses low, looking for a chase, doesn't get it from Walton. Wind still blowing straight out towards center field. Definitely been a factor in some of these long balls today. The one, two, swung on and missed, strike three, big strikeout for Reynolds. And the Mountain Lions can get out of it with a double play ball up the middle. As coming to the plate, it's Jordan Medina. Big pitching there as Reynolds is able to get Caden Walton, who's had two straight hits with a double and a single. So the first out of the inning, big time. Dina, a single and a walk as well as a fly out and a strikeout. One for three is his line on the day. That was the first pitch back 0-1. As this one's lifted into left field, this one's playable. Tagging at third, the throw will come through. It's just up the line, so the second run will score. And that will officially close the book on Hayden Zwag as in to score Morgan on the sack fly and a two-run lead for CCU. Still at first base is Frankie Schoen. Check over to first, nothing doing over there. Stubbings trying to encourage Evan Reynolds on the mound. Cougars tacking on two runs here, but as we've seen today. Oh, and this one's crushed to right field, looking up and watching it go. Dylan Moraes, the second home run of the day for Gabe Ramos, who had a two run shot back in the fourth inning. And he has his second two-run big fly here. And it is a four-run lead once again for CCU. Ramos certainly knows what to do with that one as he puts that one well over the field and over the fence in right field, excuse me. And out of the batter's box, he knew it. He pimped it. We'll take a look at the replay here. As this ball was launched. Well over the head, and Ramos took his time to admire it. 1-0 here is again well hit to right field back, and this one's going to go as well. Big fist bump from Luke Thompson. And a solo shot. It's a five-run lead after the Mountain Lions able to come all the way back to tie it. In the bottom half of the sixth, the top of the seventh has been all CCU. That'll be the 11th home run of this ball game. Yes, the long ball has been everything for both teams. 
Strike one delivered to Bodie Flores, who takes his turn. Flores also with a big fly. A grand slam for Flores back in the third inning. Flores has a pair of doubles to his name. This one's on the ground to short. This should end the inning for UCCS. Hella across, but not before damage done. A five-run lead restored for CCU after a big inning. And the Mount Lions still with work to do as they come back up the bottom half of the seventh. It's stretch time. Top of the lineup, due up here in the seventh inning for UCCS. As Hayden Zwag leading things off, or excuse me, Hayden Zwag, Hayden Iverson leading things off. And he'll take an outside strike to open his at bat. GC Watney is still out there on the mound for CCU. This one's grounded, nice. Pick up at second base as Flores read it well. And out number one in the seventh is Hayden Iverson. Iverson's been a big, big part of this offense. So far, getting him out has been no easy task this afternoon. Pastorello looking to bunt, called a strike. As this is typically what he likes to do, bunting his way on, showing off that speed, the 0-1. That one's outside, 1-1. One and one. Turning into somewhat of a track star here at UCCS as well as Mason Pastorello. Midway through the indoor season, joining up, starting to run the 60-meter dash for the Mount Lions track team. Made his way up to the RMAC championships with the track team as this one's up the middle for a base hit. And for the second straight trip to the plate, or excuse me, third straight trip to the plate, Passarello finds his way on. And a one out base runner for Kit Wigington. It's not often as a substitution you'll get so many at bats, but Mason Pastorello has made his time worth it. And that one's going to plunk Kit Wigington. So first and second, one out for Caleb Stubbings, who's hit home runs in his last two trips to the plate. Golden opportunity here for UCCS to pull back within two. Stubbings has got to be licking his chops. He's had two walks to start the game and didn't get to see a strike. And was wondering when he would get to get in on the fun and he has certainly done so. I wonder why they weren't throwing him strikes in those first two at bats. As the second two at bats, he has taken it over the fence, takes for ball one here. Dylan Morace waits on deck. He's had quite the impact himself subbing into this game. That one outside, one and one. Stubbings entered the afternoon with a three home runs on the year and already has two today. Check on Pastorello towards second base. Doesn't seem too worried. He does take off for third. 
no throw, and a stolen bag, and a run 90 feet away for UCCS is once again Pastorello showing off that speed. An interesting decision, certainly with Pastorello's speed, not a bad call, but the way Stubbings has been hitting, I'm going to give him every, every chance he can to bat in some runs. This one left over the middle of the plate, but Stubbings missed it, fouling it back two and two. I wouldn't be surprised if the Mountain Lions start to play a little bit of a cat and mouse game on the base pass here because if a throw goes down to second base, they are almost guaranteed a run in with the blazing speed at third from Pastorello. So Wigington theoretically could move up rather easily. He doesn't have Mason Pastorello speed, but he does move well himself. Is that one once again fouled back? As Stubbings battling at the plate, trying to find his pitch. One once again chopped. Foul. Two and two, the count remains. Wind dying down. More calm breeze that we saw at the beginning of the game. It's whipped up more than once during play today. Another 2-2. Two -two. This one's looped into left field. Jogging home is Mason Pastorello. And first and second for Dylan Morais with one out. Nice piece of hitting. Fended off a couple pitches that maybe could have been viewed as a strike. So Stubbings will be aboard for the fifth time today. Well, I guess you wouldn't consider the home runs being aboard, but it's just passing through <laughs> as race taking his turn. And this one's right up the middle, gets past Wigington as he had to make sure he got out of the way. So he'll stop at third, Stubbings back to second base. And here comes Tyler Richardson, who, as we saw his last time up, can really swing it as well. Almost put one over the batter's eye in center field. Nice piece of hitting again. As Kit Wigington, always aware on the base pass, might have been able to get around to tag on a run, but had to avoid that blazing hit from Dylan Moraes. Yeah, almost no time to react for Kit Wigington. There's another update for you in the Women's National Championship halftime. LSU leads it 59 to 42 over Iowa. This one's hit well, high in the air, going back in right center field, and it gets down. It's going to hop over the fence, so a ground rule double. That's actually the best case scenario for CCU. In to score is Wigington and Stubbings, but by rule, having to stop at third base is Morais and nearly clipping a grand slam and tying the game is Tyler Richardson. Yeah, it looked like Gabe Ramos out in right field just misjudged it. This wind has been whipping back and forth, like we've mentioned. Feels like every other inning now. Could see his frustration slapping the fence after that one escaped him. All of the runners would have scored. I would have even ventured to say that Richardson had a shot at third base if that one stayed in the park, but instead just a ground rule double, so he stands on second. But the tying run in scoring position again for UCCS. Vander Hodges at the plate came up big in this situation to tie the game. His last time up last inning had an RBI double. A 1-1 one, one to him to outside, 2-1. and one. What a game we've seen this afternoon. Yeah, compared to yesterday when it was a lot of pitching, felt like a pitching duel for most of that first game, and this game has certainly shown the offensive prowess. This one's on the ground. This should be an out. In to score 
is Dylan Morais retired at first, but doing a job as Vander Hodges and two outs, tying run 90 feet away once again for UCCS for Luis Samarano. Just goes to show, again, they were, we were level after six innings, and then they went up 18-13 to the Cougars. And now we're back to 18-17. This game has been back and forth all day. Another RBI for Vander Hodges, his second of the day. All one delivered to Samarano. Second pitch on its way. That one's in there, one and one. See what the Mount Lions can do as they've gone back and forth with the Cougars. Another pitch. That one catches the outside half. One and two. This one swung on and missed. Big strikeout for Watney. But the Mount Lions get four runs back. Five in the top half, four in the bottom half. And it's 18 to 17. We're headed to the eighth inning at Mount Lion Park. Welcome back to Mount Lion Park, a crazy back and forth game, 18 to 17, 35 runs total between these two teams in game one. We still have another game to play after this. It'll be Joe McDermott on the pitch for UCCS and for McDermott, the Little brother of a former All-American here at UCCS comes in an 18.78 ERA. He is 1-0 in decisions as he looks to pick up his second win as he enters this game. His seventh overall appearance, all of them in relief for UCCS. Major made into the plate will be the first to face him. And a tough hop for Pastorello. He stays with it and delivers an out to first base. And Caleb Stubbings, a good start for McDermott. Yeah, it's just what Dave Hadjik was hoping for is outs have been hard to come by in between runs in this game. Second straight at bat that Major Maiden has grounded out to Mason Pastorello. Is that one nice breaking ball drops in for strike one on Russell Cruz. Russell Cruz with a long single his first time up on a 3-2 pitch. Got the five run push going to lead things off. Last inning for CCU offensively. That one misses inside one and one. One one is fouled back to the screen. Two and 
two and two now, and a uh, tough day for Evan Reynolds as he comes in, but he not not the outing that he was looking for with the five runs in the seventh inning. Yeah, certainly a difficult day in the office as all of these pitchers have really, really struggled, although it's been the bats that have been the real factor, so it's hard to kind of put the blame on any of these pitchers as everyone's been hitting the ball well. Three and two here. This one softly on the ground to Ronan Hellhead short. He'll come across. Good stretch from Stubbings at first base. Two up and two down and just what UCCS needed. And that will leave it for Aaron Morgan in the eighth. Had a couple of one, two, three innings in the last couple games out here but today they've been hard to come by so got a shot to do it here mount lions got a one two three inning with these three batters in the fifth trying to do it for the second time that's the only one two three inning we've had all game so that one just misses inside ball one on aaron morgan mcdermott Deep breath on the mound, starts his windup. That one inside as well, 2-0. and oh. Words of encouragement from behind the plate. Tyler Richardson calling out to his pitcher. 2-0. -oh. This one on the ground again. Joe McDermott, what a performance coming on in relief. Gets a 1-2-3 inning in the Mount Lions just down a run. Look to get even or even take the lead when we come back in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ronan Hello still looking for his first hit of this game, leading things off for the Mountain Lions. And it's back up to the top of the lineup. First pitch to him. Strike right up at the hands. 0-1. Oh Nine one and two due up in the inning for UCCS and aggressive, but behind 0-2, oh Ronan Hella leading things off. We're talking at the break. How big a one, two, three inning was there, and J.C. Watney certainly looking to do so here. This one looks like it's going to stay in play in foul territory, able to make the grab, Major Maiden. And out number one in the eighth inning for the Mount Lions is Ronan Hella. Hayden Iverson with a big day at the plate. He is three for four. He reached on an error in the second inning. A pair of home runs, a single, and a ground out. It's the line on Hayden Iverson today. A couple RBIs, three runs scored himself. 1-0 oh. to him. That one just catches the outside half, one and one. That one right there as well on the outside half, one and two. Mason Passarello waits on deck. Yeah. 
That one low and inside. Two and two, the count will even. As patience at the plate from Hayden Iverson. The 2-2. Two -two. This one on the ground is short. Up with it, Walton. He'll throw across. Nice and easy play for out number two. And it's up to Mason Pastorello for the Mount Lions in the eighth. Iverson able to reach back in the third inning on that air from the shortstop, but Cade Walton, Caden, excuse me, handles business this time. First pitch to Pastorello. This one's hit high in the air to right center field, sliding over and making the grab is Gabe Ramos. One, two, three. The pitchers match each other in the eighth inning, and it's a one-run game, 18 to 17. We're headed to the ninth inning from Colorado Springs. And it's the top of the lineup as well for CCU here in the ninth inning. Shern, Walton, and Medina all due to the plate. Joe McDermott still on the mound for UCCS. First pitch from him is fought off foul into the Mount Lion bullpen where it looks like Garrett Shriver is up and throwing for the Mount Lions. 0-1 on the Cougars' leadoff man. Nice bunt place down. Hodges up with it, has to go quick, makes the out at first base. Good clean transition at third base on the charging Vander Hodges. And Shern is out number one. Making that throw across her body while charging in. You'll see him practice it before the games, but nothing like a game situation and just a ridiculous play from Hodges to get this first out. First pitch. Two Caden Waltons in there on the inside half for strike one. Mount Lions trying to fight their way back. Been down as much as eight runs in this game. The 0 2. High going up to grab it is Tyler Richardson. One and two now on Walton. One, two, strike three called. He rung him up with the fastball. Big strikeout for UCCS. And there's two outs, nobody on for Jordan Medina. McDermott's been doing a great job of Again, like we said, just attacking, making your opponent come to you, make those hits, and as often his defense, excuse me, has handled it well. That one's high for ball one. First strikeout of the day for McDermott. Second inning of work here. 1-0. That one's fouled straight back, one and one. Another offering. This one fouled out of play, one and two. Eight 
18 to 17 in favor of CCU. One and two, two outs in the top of the ninth. That one's left high, two and two. Checking out the scoreboard, the only time either team has not put up a run was that last inning, number eight. Otherwise, the board is riddled with other numerals. Lots of crooked numbers up there. Three and two, two outs in the top of the ninth. The payoff to Medina, swung on and missed. Foul tip is held behind the plate, back-to-back -back strikeouts, and a big outing in relief for Joe McDermott. And it's up to the mount lines in the bottom of the ninth inning. They need just one to tie. We'll see how it finishes when we return. You're watching RMAC Baseball. Bottom of the ninth inning, it's up to Kit Wigington to lead it off. Big swing to start it out and he fouls it off. 0-1, Wigington his last time up was plunked. He singled before that as well as walked. He's got three runs in this game scored for UCCS. He's behind 0-2. Watney electing to pitch right from the stretch here. The 0-2 to Wigington, that one in the dirt. The right-hander's batter's box, so way outside, one and two. Stubbings waits on deck. Behind him is Dylan Morace. The one-two. That one just misses outside. Good frame from Medina. They don't get the call. CCU dugout letting the umpiring crew hear their displeasure. Instead, the two-two. That one outside as well, three and two. Wigginton poised up there. There's only one hit on the day, but walked a couple times. See his approach on the payoff pitch. See how it plays out. Kit Wigginton faces the payoff. Ball four. And the leadoff runner on in the ninth for UCCS. Watney jumped out to an early 0-2 start. Against Wigington pitching quick, but Wigington locked in and wasn't chasing any of those pitches out of the zone. Caleb Stubbings, the winning run for UCCS at the plate. This one's hit well to center field. Back to the wall, looking up, walk off, two run, home run. Caleb Stubbings with his third home run of the game wins it for UCCS and they take game three, 19 to 18. Caleb Stubbings, are you kidding me? Three home runs on this Sunday afternoon and the Mountain Lions grab the W off that bomb. It took 37 runs, but the Mountain Lions win it in an absolute fight in game three. Here's the replay. A fastball that 
Caleb Stubbings didn't mistake. He takes it out to the deepest part of the park and the mountain lines with the victory. Unbelievable, Caleb Stubbings, and that's how this one ended. You knew, you knew, Brian, headed to the ninth inning after this absolute crazy game that there was something special in store for UCCS. There is no way Caleb Stubbings was not going to play hero after going deep already twice this game. And that one was absolutely crushed to center field. Well, that will do it for us here in game one. A 19-18 walk-off win for UCCS. We'll leave you with the highlights as they roll by. But we've got more baseball for you this afternoon. The second game in our doubleheader will start in about 20 to 25 minutes time. And the rubber match between these two, the Mount Lions look to get the 3-1 series win. The Cougars will look to earn the split in game two when we return. But for game one, alongside my partner Brian Gein and I'm Jay Gross for all our, of our crew and all of our representatives at Mount Lion Athletics, thank you for watching. The Mount Lions win a thriller 19-18. We'll see you in a bit on the RMAC Network and UCCS Live.